let's talk about a little bit about basic Java syntax. All right, we friends, back in general once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking a little bit about basic Java syntax over here. So, of course, to get your brain to remember this, last time we talked about a declaration as well as assignment of value and initialization. So let's see this one again, right? We have an integer over here called points, right? This is going to be a, an integer variable, right, of the data type integer called points. You can even hover over this and you can see that it says int points over here. You can see, however, that that is the declaration, right? We're declaring a variable over here. And from this point onwards, we can now refer to this if we type in points. And we can even see this, right? If I were to just start typing in points, you can see all of a sudden it even suggests this to us and we can hit tab to autocomplete this and then can say, well, I want to assign the value to points with an equal operator over here. So this is going to be equals 100. And then this is going to be the assignment. So it's quite important that the equal over here is actually an operator. So this is like your multiplication or your addition operator, right? So the plus or the and the times or something like that. That is actually the same idea with the equals. The equals is not the same as in math. So you couldn't just write 100 equals points, right? That in this case does not work because it is actually a cited operator. So, so the idea is that the right value is going to be assigned to the left variable. That is the general idea. And that actually goes as far as if I were to type in x equals to points, right? That is not the same as if I were to write points equals x. In this case, 100 is going to be written into x, while in this case, also 100 is going to be written into points because the x has changed. But if I were to comment this out, then all of a sudden, points would be equal to minus 69. So you can basically play around with this as well if you were to output this. So that's actually a very important point. This is the assignment operator and not just an equals just like in math. And like I've already told you, but I wanted to reiterate this because I have seen a couple of beginners sometimes struggle with this. Every instruction has to end with a semicolon. So what you will find is that if I don't have this, you can see that if you hover over this, first of all, you're going to get this little red underline. That's going to be when there is a mistake in your program somehow. And you will find that if I hover over this, there is a semicolon expected. And as soon as I add the semicolon, the error goes away. The similar thing goes, by the way, if you were to type an illegal Symbol over here, for example, right? So you can see that it cannot resolve symbol A because it doesn't know what, what does A stand for. Even if I were to put in a symbol that it knows, for example, points, it's going to say that that's not a statement. I don't even know what you're doing over here. 42 points. That doesn't make any sense. So keep in mind that most of the time the code is going to tell you what is wrong. If you have red underlines, you can always hover over them and take a look at basically what the frig is happening. That's another great point. You should never be afraid if there is an error in your code, right? If you have an error, do not freak out. This is the apps. This is the most normal thing that you can basically see. So if you're getting any errors either inside of your code or once you execute it, that is absolutely no worries. That is a normal part of programming. Errors are the only way that you basically learn to fix those mistakes and then you are not going to do those again. Or even if you do, because some errors you're going to do all the time because that is just how programming is. The amazing thing about programming is that we're working on something called software and the reason why it's called software is because you can change it easily. Hardware, well, if you do a mistake there, you probably got to throw it away. So be happy that it is code and programming that you're working on. We have the magical undo button over here and that is, I mean, worth so much. It is incredible. Anyway, I feel like this is enough theory. Next time in this video, we'll talk about input and output. So we're going to start doing some stuff. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.